What's going on, everybody? While the Bitcoin Maxis have been having their little conference down in Miami, it's been Cosmos Week here on CoinLogic. So we're going to be wrapping up this week talking about the Atom charts. We're going to be looking at some news from the uh, from the ecosystem, like the Juno blockchain shutting down for a couple of days. Definitely been some drama there, some malicious actors, malicious smart contracts at play. But everything seems to be fixed and up and running. We're going to be talking a bit about that, though, as well as Terra has been buying up a whole bunch of avalanche tokens to back the UST stablecoin, which is one of the fastest growing stablecoins in the space. And as we know, is the preferred stablecoin for the IBC ecosystem. So we're going to be taking a look at an article from our friends over at AMB Crypto on that from our news center. So we're going to be checking a look at that charts more. So stay tuned, guys. And we're going to be getting into this Friday market wrap up. Welcome back to another Friday market wrap up here on CoinLogic TV, where we are looking logically at crypto assets. I am your host, The Logical Dude, your favorite van life living crypto investing digital nomad. I hope you guys are doing great today. It is an absolutely beautiful day where I'm at. I'm kind of having to sit at an angle because if I had a turn, the sun's going to blind you from this side. So, but hey, you know what? It's been nice and warm. Springtime's happening. I'm a happy dude. And... I just wish the crypto markets would do a spring in the right direction instead of the the downward spring. So, because, yeah, it's been a rough week, guys, in the crypto markets. It seems like every time they have this Bitcoin conference down in Miami, that the markets have absolutely tanked. So, but, you know, hey, there's all kind of global tensions going on. Who knows what's really happening? But here on CoinLogic, we got, like I said, we've had some changes uh, in the past week or so to the interface. So we got the top 10 by market cap and volume coming at you from the get-go. We've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, BNB, USD coin, uh, the USDC coin from Circle. We've got XRP, Solana, here's our Terra Luna, Cardano, and then Avalanche coming in at number 10. So top 10 by volume, we've got Tether, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Dollar, USDC coin, Terra Luna, Mir Protocol, XRP, Solana, and then BNB wrapping up the top 10 by volume there. So our top 10 gainers of the top 100, we've got Humans AI. We've got Juno coming up. Like I said, we've got some news coming up from that. It's actually popping up because we can actually move the coins around again. We got Near Protocol, Convex Finance, Steppen, Leo Token, not Leo Finance. This is Leo Token from Bitfinex. And we've got Stablecoin, Stablecoin, Stablecoins. So not crazy, you know, as far as the gainers. Like I said, it's been a rough week. So top 10 losers of the top 100, though. We've got Waves, Thorchain, Zillica, Cello. We've got Harmony down. We've got Terra Luna down, even after all this good news. We've got Ave down, Synthetics, Graph, and Solana. So we're all still building in the background, no matter what the price in, uh, is doing. I've been getting in really heavy in a lot of these Discord chats, and there's just a lot of price, price. What about the price? What about the price? Guys, we're working on that, all right? We're trying to build value in all this stuff. So all these developers are working hard to bring you guys some really awesome services. So the thing in the crypto markets that we need to remember is there's a word out there, and it's become a dirty word in this market. That's patience. Got to have some patience, guys. So we have no control really over these markets as retail investors. We can only do so much. It's the big moon, uh, the big money that's moving this stuff around, and we can't really control what the wells are doing at this. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So our fear and greed index. We are down to a thirty. People are getting a little fearful, even in the ma even with the Bitcoin maxis down there in Miami doing their little thing and. Hyping up and yelling, screaming, Bitcoin to the moon, and everything's going to happen on Bitcoin, and the entire payment system's going to be on the Lightning Network, and whatever, you know, they're screaming down there. Yeah, the markets are still looking like crap. So, <laughs> you know, it is what it is, you know. We just got to, you know, tuck our head between our legs and just get, roll with it, you know. It's just kind of what it is. It, I'm convicted in this market. I'm not in it for more dollars. I'm in it for more assets that I can turn into more things, more Bitcoin, more Litecoin, 
uh, assets that I know are going to appreciate over time. I have a long-term view in this market, not necessarily a short-term price view. So I'm in it for the fundamentals. You're going to get a lot of fundamental aspects on this channel too. So anyway, going to back to the technicals though. Matching that nice little 30 fearful we're at, you see that the uh, sell signal here on TradingView is looking like the same angle going on. So we're in a sell signal. We got 12 of the oscillators screaming sell, eight are neutral and only six are buy. You can click on where it says BTC USD and that'll take you to TradingView and give you a more in-depth analysis on that. <coughs> so today though, we are not looking at the Bitcoin charts. If you want to look at the Bitcoin charts, you can come over here to coin-logic.com, come down here to the charts and click on Bitcoin. But we're looking at the Atom charts today because it's been Atom week here on uh, CoinLogic TV. And I just reversed that. So anyway, here we are, back. So you see Atom is falling down to an extremely hardcore line of support here. So we're going to actually put us a little line here and we're going to zoom out a bit. And this is on the daily time frame. You're going to see that we have, we are sitting and consolidating here on a pretty major zone of uh, support and resistance. So it's been acting as support, but at every time it keeps hitting it as support, it's going to make it weaker and weaker and we may actually break down. So. The only the reason that I say that we may break down before we break up, this is not the only chart that's looking like this, is that we've got a lot of downward momentum here on the uh, just the momentum and the volume here. So you can see our vo uh, our volume is rolling downhill while we were having some rising price action. So we've definitely had a drop here on the RSI. We are below the 50 line, which actually puts it, it's still in technically neutral territory, but we're in that bearish side of the neutral territory here on the RSI. Our 14 day average is moving down as well. So we could actually see some further downside here with Adam. And I know, I know, don't, don't, don't kill me. Don't kill me. I'm just the messenger. I'm just going by the data that I'm being given here on the charts. So, Taking a look at some more lines of resistance, we could see, you know, if we broke down around the $24 range, we could even see as low as the $21 to $22 range. Hopefully we don't see that. Uh, so, but that could absolutely happen here. As you can see, both of those lines are some pretty significant lines of support and resistance. They do have some volume movement across those lines. So all this is is the price trying to find fair value. So once we get down here, if we keep going down, it's going to hit the oversold level on the RSI and eventually bounce. That could bring the price action down, down, and then bounce again. So just be patient. If you're looking at it on a long-term time frame, just my, my thing is when prices are down, just stack it, you know? Like, I live on this stuff, right? So I do have to sell a lot of times to pay bills and things like that, trying to work on getting out of all my U.S., you know, debts and payments and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, that's hard. So I do have to sell sometimes. But when it's down and I don't have to sell, then I stack it up. So that's a good time to keep kind of adding to your stack is when prices are down. So not necessarily going out and, you know, Betting the, betting the barn on it, you know, so don't go throw all your money at it when it's down because I'm not one necessarily one of those believers in buy the dip, buy the dip every time. I buy the dip when the charts tell me to buy the dip. This is not one of those times that the charts telling me to buy the dip because we could have some more further downside and you don't want to be catching any knives or anything like that because that crap hurts if you've ever tried to catch a falling knife. Yeah, it's not very fun. Uh, so let's take a closer look here. We're going to come down here and I've already set this up for the Adam uh, USD charts here on Coinbase. You can see ooh, we had a big gap down in the last minute here. We've had a big drop. Uh, so this is the one minute chart over here on the left side. You can see the really super short term time frames, kind of see what's happening in real time, basically. Um, so we are we did have a big gap down. So we've started our next minute. Hopefully we're going to bring that up a little bit we want to go in the other direction but again we could see some further downside you see over here on the one hour chart on the right hand side that we have definitely started printing a, a red candle here starting to even out but we could go the other way so this could be setting up for a three part uh a three bar pattern up on the hourly so 
don't know. We got to see what's going to happen here on the one minute. Oh, and as you see, it starts to kind of pump up a little bit. So this is a great way for you to kind of come and compare short-term time frames if you're wanting to watch and actually trade this market. Uh, so come down here and... Yeah, if you want, and this can be set up for any symbol that you want to set it up for. So you can come in here and set them up. They are by default set up for Bitcoin, but you can come in here and set it up for any symbol that you want to set it up for. Coming up here, looking again at the daily time frame, we've already looked at that support and resistance line that we're hitting pretty heavy. But over here on the weekly, so looking at more of a macro outlook time frame, you know, you can see where we're sitting at, and that's really when we had this big, massive run up here on Adam. That was where it peaked, dropped back down real low before our parabolic rise up. Well, where we're falling now is in this zone of resistance here that we hit our heads on before we did our last parabolic move up. And so, uh, or, you know, this big like horseshoe move that we've got going on here. So right where we're at, there's a ton of volume and a ton of price action in this area. So maybe we can actually hold this and it would create still another higher low. If we could stop right here, like quit selling and actually start moving in the other direction, that could create a nice little higher low. If we break where we're at and we go down further, that could create the beginnings of a pretty major downtrend. And that's not fun. So, be safe out there trading, guys. Let's take a quick look here at the CoinLogic Index. We've definitely been taking a beating over the week, as you can see here. Uh, all of our stuff is basically down. The only thing that is back up, like I said, is Juno, and that's just because we can now start moving stuff around and trading it again, and people are, I guess, trying to buy back in. But it's been a rough struggle for Juno the last few days. Uh, our little buddy Comdex over here is a great little sponsor. They've got an awesome Dex that's getting ready to come out to be able to trade synthetic assets. You can track that right here on uh, CoinLogic. It has definitely been taking a hit the other day. It was sitting around 120. Now it's down to 114. But when you guys see what they're trying to do, that's going to change things around a little bit. And then uh, our newest Emanate has actually pumped up and has actually given us some pretty good gains here. Uh, for what we've got, but it has taken a little bit of a, a retracement seat back down uh, 5% over the day. So let's take a look. If you go in here into the news center, you're going to see a bit of a change here. So we're uh, setting this up a little bit differently. We've got our outside news sources. It starts off with our friends at a and Crypto, then goes to our Bitcoin news. And these are just little accordions. So now you can click on this and see whichever one that you want to see here. All right, and then we even added a section for our curated from the blockchain here. So these are uh, posts that the uh, CoinLogic.online account comes in and curates here on the Hive blockchain. And then now we've got a section for articles that we are producing. So right now it's mainly me producing things, but I am looking for any authors that want to come in and kind of help me produce good, uh, solid crypto content, news, tutorials, that kind of thing. If you're interested in coming and writing for CoinLogic, let me know. We can talk about something. Um, but yeah, got got some changes here on the news sources here. But just wanted to show you that real quick. What we're looking at today, though, is this article from AMB Crypto that Terra chooses AVX over ETH, BNB, and Soul to back UST. So this is actually pretty huge news. Uh, for the uh, for the Avalanche community here. Because not only did Terra make this move here, Grayscale also made this move as well. They bought a whole bunch of uh, AVAX as well. I believe I saw that. Where did I see that? Was that Decrypt? Let's see here. Maybe. Nope. Nope. Decrypt's been talking about Ice Cube for the last week. Ice Cube's all about NFTs. Where did I see that the Grayscale bought that? I don't know. I saw that somewhere. But anyway, Grayscale bought a whole bunch of AVAX too. So, but anyway, um, yeah, Terra Luna's foundation is acquiring a whole bunch of AVAX worth over $100 million in order to add it to the existing reserves for the UST stablecoin. So this is really, really big. Uh, so you guys can come in here, check out this article from AMB Crypto. So the UST reserve is actually diversifying. So they just bought a whole bunch of Bitcoin as well. Uh, so they're backing it with Bitcoin. But what's funny is that they are actually backing it and choosing Avalanche, AVEX, 
before any other major players like even Ethereum or Binance Coin, Solana, and Cardano. So that's telling you something about the AVAX platform and what they're working on So and why it's in the top 10 at this point. So it makes you want to take a look. So at the time that this article was written, Luna was around $102 uh, at time of trading. And AVAX was around eighty eight fifty five, so not bad. Those are pretty solid players in the states uh, in the space. So this is looking pretty good. So you come here and come and check out this article from AMB Crypto. I will put the link in the description down below. But one big thing that I want to talk about, and kind of a big cluster screw over the last uh, week in the Cosmos space, has been the Juno blockchain. It restarted yesterday, finally, following over 24 hours of network shutdown. I think it was actually closer to 48, though. So it was trading down hardcore. It dropped down really hard uh, right before everything just finally shut down and magically kind of thing. So Juno is the sovereign blockchain based on the Cosmos ecosystem. So um, this is a couple of days old, but it would be back online Thursday after it remained offline for over 24 hours due to a malicious smart contract that crashed the network. So users were absolutely growing impatient uh, by the day and expressing their frustrations online. The Juno, uh, the Juno network uh, scheduled to be back in operation on Thursday. It did actually launch on Thursday. So uh, I was talking to a bunch of the validators and that kind of thing, and they were head to the grindstone. Uh, over the last couple of days trying to get this thing back up and running. So, good thing that they were able to get that all situation uh, situated and taken care of here. So, basically, it was malicious actors for three days made a trial and error work of sending more than 400 transactions to the smart contracts. So, which eventually landed on a perfect combination of transactions that crashed the network completely. That was reported by Coindesk. So the hackers reportedly exploited the blockchain's vulnerability, which Juno will address through the updates uh, that were that have been rolled out at this point. So if you follow the space, you kind of know what's been going on. You've been following the different validators and that kind of thing. But if you don't follow the space, if you're just in it to put some money in and let your numbers go up because Juno has a high inflation rate, then you know you may have missed this or yeah if you weren't able to get your money or claim your tokens you didn't know what was going on well this is what happens so got to be careful with some of these blockchains especially a lot of these newer projects that are coming out so things can happen this is new tech so you got to protect your investments that way so definitely um thing that i am actually on staking my juno and i'm going to be moving it into other things because after the whole community fiasco over the last uh month or so with the Juno whale thing and them actually, you know, the community voting to basically take money away from wallets uh, between that and then the blockchain shutting down, we're going to be cutting ours. So that's our plan. We're going to be getting out of the Juno project. So it will be getting removed from our coin logic index coming up soon due to all this, you know, uh, not even giving them a strike three on this one. So this was a big strike too. And yeah, I, it was more of a pop-up foul that got caught by the catcher. So I'm out. That is what it is. So as you can see, it's been a really interesting week. Markets have been doing some eh kind of stuff. And it's crazy what happens during all these big conferences. You know, we used to actually get big pumps during these conferences, like the Consensus Conference and the Bitcoin Conference and stuff. But now we don't. Now we get more market dumps. I feel like all these whales are getting together and it's like, yeah, let's make them think we're going to do something then we're going to short everybody. Aha! No, that's probably not what's going on. But it's just kind of funny how it all happens. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, we got a big week coming up next week. We're getting back into talking about content creation. I have got the man, the myth, the legend himself, Taskmaster4450, the highest earner on the Hive blockchain. This dude is a machine. Cranks out articles and videos right and left. I don't know how he's got so much in his head. But we're going to be talking to that dude with the big shiny head wearing the glasses. I can't wait to talk to him on Wednesday. And then we've got another Twitter Spaces coming up next Friday with the founder of Beach Chain, a music social network built on top of the Hive blockchain. We're going to be talking about 
music, Web3, NFTs, partnerships with Blocktoons, partnerships with GameState, and things like that. So we're really excited to be getting into the world of music on the blockchain this week, content creation, showing you some cool tools that you can use to get your uh, get your blogging career going in the right direction on the blockchain, making that money and owning your own data. Because when you're putting stuff out on Twitter, when you're putting stuff out on YouTube, when you're putting stuff out there on Medium, you don't own that data. They can shut you down at any point in time. But if you come and join the Hive Network, which is true Web3 social media, if you come and post your videos on 3Speak, TV.TV, who we had an interview with last week, absolutely awesome time with them on Twitter spaces. Go and check out that video. One of the actually highest uh, earning posts that I've ever put up. So really, really excited to have talked to them. We're going to be taking a look at the three speak platform next week. So stay tuned, come and follow coin logic online on Twitter. We got all kind of juicy stuff going on there. Coinlogic.online on the hive network there. And then of course go to coin logic.com link in the description below, come and get all your crypto research and then come. And if you are in the cosmos ecosystem and if you want to earn some passive income, and come and stake your Comdex, your Wawa, your Kerberos, and your Nomic tokens with our friends over at Carbon Zero Infinity. We're actually getting ready to do a brand changeover. I'm going to be doing some posts on that that you'll see this week as well. So trying to start a, a good eco-friendly validator node service, carbon neutral, giving back to eco-friendly causes. We're doing good things here in this space using cryptocurrencies so come and join us please give us like subscribe on all the networks all that good stuff i appreciate it it keeps me going i love you all have a great rest of your day and a wonderful weekend i will see you next week be cool be real always abide and don't get wrecked out there in those crazy markets